in chapter 4 okay we will begin by the knowledge base agents okay so this is a new kind of agent okay not com not completely new but of course it is a little different okay than the other agents uh, but the main idea is it's same okay so this agent okay, this one is based on knowledge base okay so the central the main idea okay the main component of knowledge base agent is the knowledge base and uh, it was exactly in the same way as I have shown you earlier the, about the functioning of agents so here we have agents okay and the environment itself and the interaction between the agent and the environment by getting the sense of the environment using the sensors Okay, and then doing some action by the actuators. Okay, so so this is all okay about the agent, and the specific thing is about the knowledge base is if uh, an agent is intelligent. Let's say if an agent is intelligent, then it must have, it should have okay knowledge. So the main idea is knowledge. So if we think about an agent as the agent is intelligent, if an agent is intelligent, this means the agent must have knowledge. Without knowledge, we cannot say agent is intelligent. Okay. So if the agent there's knowledge, then there's intelligence, right? So the knowledge base is uh, mainly is a set of is a uh, repository is a collection of sentences okay and you can think sentences as something like useful information okay whatever is there inside so all the information okay which is useful can be think can be thought as sentences okay so the knowledge base is nothing but a set of sentences okay a useful a collection of useful informations that are saved inside the uh, memory of the agents okay so if you can remember I earlier about the agents that agent work out the environment let's say this is the environment and it is there's some interaction and there's some control okay control factor control uh, function you can think like this one so the control function does have a lot of activities inside. The control functions have memory that is used to save the data or information or observations. So that memory is used to collect all the knowledge itself. Okay, you can think like this. Okay, anyway, uh, each sentence is expressed in terms of okay in in terms of a language. So to express a sentence, knowledge, we need some language, okay? So that language is called knowledge representation language. This is the thing. And the representations are, okay, some, uh, just uh, some assertion about the word. This means, okay, uh, these, okay, are just, I mean, the agents must have the knowledge of the word, okay? knowledge of the environment or knowledge of entire okay uh, entity which is surrounding so the agent okay uh, must have okay the knowledge of the word okay and it and the knowledge representation language okay uh, is the expression which is used to okay uh, communicate about the sentences okay so every sentence uh, need some and language is is a presentation that's all okay let's move to the uh, next point there should be okay uh, there must be a way okay there should be a way I will, I will tell you in the next slide there should be a way a method a mean okay means to add some new sentence okay so let's say I'm talking about the memory so every time in a memory, okay, let's say uh, in the memory, you need to add something. So for that one, okay, you have you 
it has some method, okay, some operations. And also, okay, uh, to retrieve something, get out of the okay memory, you need another operation. So usually in databases we say it as uh, insertion and extraction, okay. So inserting some data, extracting, taking out some data. In the same way, we have okay in this context of knowledge base agents, we have must have some way to add new sentences, okay, to the knowledge base KB. And also we must have some, okay, a way to query, okay, to inquire about, to retrieve some information, to get out some data, useful information from time to time, okay, as per the need or requirement. So this is all about this, okay, knowledge base agent. Let's move to the next slide. So these two, Okay, remember, I, as I told you, there's a way to add new sentence, and there should be another okay, uh, way to query, okay, this one and this one. So these two are called tell and ask, okay, these are the two methods. So the standard name for these tasks are tell and ask. So every time we tell something, okay, like this one, here's the small diagram for you to understand uh, environment here and the uh, agent here right and every time whenever we get some station uh, using the sensors okay? and the uh, sensors give some observation some in useful information it is going to the in okay inference there's another function inside that is called inference so inference is okay a kind of control okay which will take all the information to the uh, from the sensors okay all the observation all the information and it will update the knowledge base okay so updation is one process it will put inside the knowledge base that new information okay new knowledge uh, new knowledge okay or you can think it as a new observation, okay? And that is the updation, means adding one more, one more, and one more, one by one, all these things. That is the process of telling. Telling the knowledge base that I got something, okay? I got something for new, uh, a new one, okay? So every time, uh, such kind of, okay, things are happening inside the knowledge base. Telling means, uh, updating the knowledge base, okay? putting inside okay? uh, new knowledge. So, telling the knowledge. And asking means every time when we need, when the agent need to do some something new, okay, it want to do something for the environment because the situation has changed, the condition has changed in the environment. So, it will first ask the knowledge base okay uh, what i need to do and knowledge base will give the knowledge okay the idea that okay let's do this thing it will be better and then okay uh, retrieval of retrieval of any asking will help the agent to do something okay so this is the process telling updating the knowledge base and asking retrieving the knowledge idea so all these are happening inside the agent. Okay, so the knowledge base agent okay have two okay operations like this. Standard name the uh, for these tasks are tell and ask. Both tasks okay uh, involve inference okay that is driving okay new sentence from the old one okay and then okay uh, so every time here's the idea that let's say uh, we have uh, initially at first moment k1 the first knowledge okay then uh, we update it with another k2 okay so it is stacking okay adding up on top of the old one new one then it becomes old and then from this old one we are topping up the next one okay k2 k1 k2 k3 and so on so this is how it is working, right? So 
from old one okay to a new one sentences right so so the inference must obey okay it must obey okay this is the condition so inference must obey the fundamental requirement that when uh, one agent asks a question to the knowledge base okay as i've shown you here the knowledge okay the answer should follow from what has been told from existing knowledge base okay so answer must come from existing previously recorded existing knowledge base okay okay uh, the next one is the knowledge base agent okay uh, must have some background knowledge okay so we are now talking about the knowledge base background knowledge okay knowledge based agents background knowledge existing knowledge okay the knowledge which is already inside the agent so the agent maintains a knowledge base always okay and uh, these okay kb contains a uh, background knowledge okay and each time okay the agent program is called so each time the agent program is called it does three things okay three things so whenever uh, the agent program is called it will do three things three things okay the first one as i told you earlier it will tell the knowledge base what it has taken from the environment what it perceives okay then the second one is it will ask the knowledge base what actions okay it the agent should do okay the third one is the agent okay records its choice okay so after uh, asking it will record okay uh, okay the i got the information i asked the kb and kb told me okay do this one then it will okay record its choice okay will tell okay and do some action okay that is all that's all so the action is executed in the third okay, stage the same thing as i told you in this okay, scenario okay let's move to the next one okay uh, the knowledge based agent background knowledge okay so here okay the details of okay, the details of representation language now we are talking about the language okay this one so the details of representation language are inside okay three these three okay these three okay functions so the function is like make percept and sentence so look at the uh, steps okay make percept sentence the second was make action query and the third one is make action sentence okay so in the first one okay uh, make percept sentence it construct okay a sentence asserting that the agent okay the agent perceived the given percept at the given time this means the agent has already okay received observed receives uh, observation from the environment or perceive the information uh, the given percept at the given time okay so each time okay it it will uh, have recorded okay perceptions uh, observations right okay uh, the next one is make action query okay so here uh, the agent constructs a sentence okay that asks what action should be done at the at the moment at the present time okay and the third one is the agent okay make action certain the uh, it will okay uh, ask uh, the agent the agent constructs okay a sentence asserting that okay the chosen action was executed this one okay so this is the third one so the details of inference mechanisms are inside okay tell and ask these two okay so the mechanisms are working in okay in the periphery of the 
tell and ask in the reference of always tell and ask okay so all the mechanism mechanism is depending on tell and ask okay okay let's go to the uh, some pseudocode okay which is used to demonstrate how the things work inside the programming so you can implement this pseudocode in any program like Python, Java, C++, okay? But the functioning will be the same, exactly same, okay? Like this one, for implementing knowledge-based agent, okay? So if you want to implement knowledge-based agent, the process is the same, okay? So we are creating a function, okay? Which is named as KB agent, okay? This one, and the KB agent is taking uh, input okay or the parameter okay so that is called percept so it is taking percept as input or parameter and it will return the action so it will take the percept and as usual okay uh, the agents get some perception and then do action right so uh, here okay we have some static data okay so it can be like kb okay knowledge base okay? also uh, the time is another okay data uh, it also takes counter as repeating the process okay this is the next thing and initializing all these data okay uh, indicating time okay the, the starting point okay initial state okay then here okay the tell process begins so tell okay kb uh, to implement make percept sentence okay this process and inside this we have two okay inputs percept and time perceptions observations and time okay and after the taking time and percent it will do action okay this one how by asking okay kb what to do okay and make action jury okay like this way so make percept sentence for telling okay so by making okay any uh, telling okay making percept and then finally make the sentence okay which is recorded inside the knowledge base. Okay? Then it will ask again, KB knowledge base, make action, okay? By first asking the question using the query, okay? What I need to do. Then, okay, that answer, okay, will be guide for doing some action, okay? This is the whole story about this one. So, uh, okay, the next thing is, uh, again, okay, after doing the action, it is not the finish, uh, the final, okay, state. The It will end up here, okay. Uh, it, it is a repeated process and at the, in the line number three here, okay, or maybe here, okay, you can think like this. It will tell again knowledge base, okay. So this is a story about the knowledge base again updating right if you can remember updation is important process so at this moment it will update kb by make action and that action is recorded and the recorded action is updated inside the sentence okay as a sentence okay inside the kb okay so make action sentence okay and action and time is recorded and the next, in the next stage or next step, in the next time, okay, uh, the process will be repeated as time plus one, okay, is t. So now we are updating, increasing the time, okay, here in this one, t to t plus one, then it will be repeated again and again like this way. Okay? Finally, uh, we will get uh, a result as action. That's all. So this is not very difficult, okay, uh, algorithm to implement knowledge-based agent, okay. So this is a simplified one. Okay, let's move to the next one. 
So uh, here is the okay approaches. So actually, we have two types of approaches okay to uh, interact with the knowledge base. Okay. So what does it mean? It means to create knowledge base and to update and to retrieve all these processes. Okay. Uh, knowledge base can be built using these two approaches. Okay. Remember. So the first approach is declarative approach to build a good intelligent knowledge base. Okay. Uh, I mean for the intelligent agents, right? So in this first process, okay, here. The knowledge base agent can be built okay, uh, using uh, or simply by telling. Okay, so it uh, telling means what it needs to do, okay? and starting with the empty knowledge base. So we start off with the empty, without anything inside the knowledge base. We start with the empty knowledge base. Okay, starting with the empty knowledge base, uh, the agent designer. Okay can tell the sentences one by one, okay? So step by step, you can think like this. So we are building knowledge base one by one. Remember, I told you one by one. Okay? So every time, step one, then step two, and step three, one by one, okay? So every time we are recording sentence one, then sentence two, then sentence three, then sentence four, and so on. So starting without any knowledge, okay? Empty knowledge base. Agent designs, uh, agent designers, okay, can tell sentences one by one, okay, until the agent knows how to operate. So I will give you an example. Let's say, uh, let's say a child, okay, is crossing a road, okay, but before the crossing, okay, uh, the father told the child that, okay. Uh, don't cross the road when a car is coming or a bike is coming. Okay, so in that case, this is the first sentence. This is the first idea, or this is the first knowledge. Okay, that is that is gained by the child. Okay, so the child will keep this idea, this knowledge, this information in his mind. That's okay, and he will not okay cross the road and to. Uh, until it is uh, without any car, without any bike. Okay, so if there is a car, it will stop. Uh, he will stop. <coughs> so, excuse me. So uh, after the, the child will give some sensation, uh, get some sensation sensation that. Uh, okay, if the car and bikes are not good for me, then of course there should be bus or trucks are also not good for me. So this is the second sensation. This is the second idea, the second knowledge, okay, or the second sentence. Then uh, it will observe. Uh, he will observe some other things also. So step by step, it is gaining. Okay, the knowledge and increasing the knowledge base right so this is called one by one sentence creation like this one so can tell sentences one by one okay so until the agent knows how to operate okay and become proficient in dealing with all the critical situations okay so the agent will be able to handle step by step finally at the end uh, the final okay, critical situation, no problem. So the child becomes intelligent by gaining knowledge. Okay, uh, so this is known as declarative approach. The other one is procedural okay, approach. So here, okay, we put inside okay, encode okay, uh, the desired behavior okay, uh, using some programming using some okay algorithm okay we 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 embed we put inside okay the agent such kind of code okay the program encodes okay desired behavior by okay programs okay programming codes so by doing so okay we will get the desired result okay uh, without any interruption okay we don't need to tell the pro, uh, the the agent that uh, examples like 
we do we don't need to tell the agent to tell uh, to give some by give uh, some examples to learn the things slowly and step by step here okay in this one we just put the program okay and the program will operate in this exactly in the same manner as i asked to do okay so uh, this is another way of okay uh, creating uh, such kind of agents right so uh, what is the difference uh, here in the procedural approach the difference is programming and uh, step by step okay examples so okay uh, the other thing is it will minimize okay the role of explicit representation so minimize the explicit representation clear representation and the reasoning okay uh, can result in more efficient system so uh, usually uh, by this way uh, the system be becomes more efficient if your program is uh, very intelligent mainly or your program is working very uh, good manner efficient way right so everything depends on program actually okay, okay uh, let's go to the next one uh, this is a uh, game Wumpus, okay word uh, so in this game okay we are talking about a game Wumpus word uh, which is a cave okay inside the cave something like this okay this is uh, some pict pictorial representation okay this is all about this one so the cave consisting of different rooms okay and connected with the uh, passageways okay like this one so, um, a beast, okay, a monster or beast that eat uh, anyone, okay, who in who enter the room like this, and the uh, whoopers can be shot okay, by the agent, uh, but the agent has only one arrow. So some rooms contain uh, bottomless pits, okay, and that is also dangerous. So that will trap anyone who wander into this room and the goal is to find the heap of gold okay so this is the goal our goal in this game goal is to find the heap of gold so here okay we can see uh, the PEAS description okay performance okay environment okay and sensors actuators okay performance environment actuator sensors okay pes description so here the p uh, performance measure is uh, there are some set of rules like let's say thousand plus for picking up okay the goal so you can get a uh, thousand plus okay uh, numbers or okay marks or Is the score for picking up the gold it is a kind of reward and minus 1000 for falling into okay into the pit or being eaten by the bumpers uh, the monster okay and minus one for each action and minus 10 for uh, using arrow okay and environment consists of four into four altogether 16 okay rooms like this one okay and uh, as you can see here the pits are here and the most is here okay and other things are here okay? uh, maybe the starting point is here like this okay so this is a kind of game maybe it could be interesting for you okay so in this one okay, the sensors are okay uh, the agent have five sensors okay the agent who is inside this game have five agent, uh, five sensors, okay? And it gives, okay, a single bit of information like this, okay? So the, these five, okay, sensors are stench, breeze, okay? Uh, the next one is uh, glitter, bump, and 
uh, stream okay all these okay? and also uh, activators are there so the activators are working uh, this is a fundamental okay uh, idea about the uh, generation of or the building up of the robots okay so actuators okay uh, can move forward okay or turn left or right okay by certain degrees okay this is the uh, actuators activity okay and do action okay so the agents can move using the actuators forward okay uh, pay attention it cannot move backward okay just only forward and left or right okay like this way and uh, the agent dies okay if it enters uh, a squad okay containing pit or in the room of compass okay so all these are just a scenario a situation how the agents work okay so let's say uh, you have uh, put an agent it will work or robot okay and it will work with certain conditions okay and certain okay uh, sensors and actuators right uh, about the logics okay so mainly the logics are working in artificial intelligence in the same way exactly like boolean algebra okay so here the boolean algebra we always have two situations true or false okay so we have two states true or false so the logic works in the air on the same way okay and it is just considered as the logic is considered as a syntax okay it can be considered as syntax of representation language so as you remember uh, representation language is the main idea okay behind okay all these if i can show you so here okay representation language okay here okay if you can see in this slide okay so representation language is the language okay of knowledge based system okay knowledge based agent okay so each sentence is expressed in language okay which is called knowledge representation language so this time we are going to represent our sentences in another language is a book so let's move to this one logic is the syntax of representation language okay which specifies all the sentences that are well formed okay so for example we have x plus y equal to 4 is well formed sentence okay this one so x plus y equal to 4 is a well formed sentence okay and uh, x because we can see it uh, by mathematically that if we add two numbers x and y then it will be four okay so it is a well-formed sentence okay in terms of mathematics and also as per the logic but how about this one does it make sense this one not really okay not a well-formed sentence because uh, the thing is okay x to y and then plus equal doesn't have any meaning okay in this respect so that's why we say it is not a well-formed sentence right uh, mathematically and logically okay the next argument about the lo logic is logic must also define okay semant semantics so this is important so logic must define the semantics okay of the language so semantic can be considered as the grammar just like in english we have grammars so it could be considered as the sum of the semantics of the language okay and meaning of sentence it must have some sense okay semantics it must have some meaning also okay meaning of the sentence this one okay so uh, as you can see from these examples okay uh, we have if we have some meaning okay let's say the first example then we say it it is a well-formed sentence and 
that's why it is it can be said like uh, it is logical sentence also uh, because it has okay uh, semantics of the language it has meaning itself okay? we add x and y then it's four okay? so this is the another important point about the okay logic and in logic, the meaning is more precise, okay, and very clear, okay. So the meaning must be very clear, also, and it defines the truth of each sentence with respect to each possible word, okay. So the truth of sentences is the uh, guaranteed definition, okay. So the logic defines, okay, the truth of each sentence with respect to each possible word, okay. We will see um, some other example in the next slide. That's okay. So let's move on. Okay, and uh, here's the example also. Okay, see here. For example, x plus y equal to four is true. This means uh, x equal to two maybe and y equal to two maybe. Okay. So if we add uh, x equal to two and y equal to two. Uh, then 2 plus 2 will be 4, okay, in this one. So it will be true. But let's say the values of x is 1 and y is equal to 1. Then it will be 1 plus 1 equal to 4, which is not possible. So the, it will be false in this case. So all the, okay, logical sentences can be true or false. The meaning is like this, okay. So we use the term model okay, of the time to uh, represent knowledge. So logic, okay, uh, in the logic we use the term model in place of possible word. So the possibilities are defined in prob probabilities, okay, and we are not talking about the probabilities or possibilities in this logical word, okay. The logical word is completely different from the probabilistic word, okay, where we can uh, measure all the measurements, okay, all the possibilities in numbers, okay, like uh, the probability of happening a coin tossed, okay, uh, if we toss a coin, uh, we can get head as 50%, okay, so this is a kind of probabilistic word where we have a certain, okay, numbers to represent the chances of happening some events but events in this logical word is not represented by numbers not by probabilities but rather it is represented by the logical symbols and logical models okay so so we use the term model in place of possible word so this is completely okay correlated like this one uh, the next thing is okay if a sentence alpha, okay, let's say we have a sentence and we represented the sentence in mathematical term like alpha. So if a sentence alpha is true, okay, if alpha is true, let's say uh, we are just putting a condition. If a sentence alpha is true in the model M, we say that M satisfies alpha, okay. So in this case, uh, we say the model satisfies the sentence okay we say that m satisfies alpha okay any the model satisfies the sentences okay which is inside the model so every sentence okay every idea which is inside certain model uh, will represent that uh, if it is true then uh, the model always satisfies those ideas that okay we have this um, idea we have this idea and it is true this is working something like this okay or sometimes okay uh, in some cases okay sometimes uh, M is a model of alpha okay so this means uh, M can be a model of alpha sentence okay so this is another possibility that sometimes we can say that model okay uh, M is a model of alpha sentence, that's all. So uh, we will get more clear idea okay, later, that's okay. So we use the notation 
magnetically as m alpha. So m is if you think m as function, okay, or alpha will be just a component of that one, okay, or just uh, m of x alpha, okay, we can represent magnetically as m of alpha or function of alpha. M is a function or of alpha, you can think like this. So, M alpha to mean the set of all models of alpha. Okay, so all the models of alpha can be represented by M alpha, this one, mathematically. So, mathematically, we can define like this. Okay, so uh, okay, let's go to the next point. Okay, M is a model of alpha. Okay, this M is a model of alpha. So this means the sentence alpha is true in model. Okay, this is the same thing. Okay, as we discuss here. Okay, this one, this one. So, so this means the sentence alpha is true in model M. So, if M is a model of alpha, okay, then we can say, okay, the sentence alpha is true because if a sentence alpha is true in the model M then we can say the sentence alpha is okay true in model M, like this way. Okay, the same thing actually so this is okay the logical representation uh entailment okay entailment okay. next point is So the entailment okay is another concept in this logical word. So the relation of logical entailment is the idea that a sentence follows logically okay from another sentence. So entailment okay represent okay the idea that a sentence follows logically from another sentence. This is the main thing. Okay. So, uh, let's say we have a sentence alpha, okay, let's say, then we can re, uh, logically say that uh, another sentence, okay, is follows, okay, the, I mean, is followed by that sentence which uh, we are talking about. Let's say uh, the alpha, sentence alpha, okay this one sentence alpha follows logically from another sentence means beta okay this one so if okay alpha then it is followed by beta another sentence that's all the meaning is like this so this is a uh, logical okay sentence followed by logic uh, follows logically from another sentence okay so it happens sometimes in the real world. Uh, we will get some examples in future, hopefully. Okay, then you can understand better. So the sentence alpha is the sentence beta, the same thing as I told you. Okay, so alpha follows logically from beta. Okay, another sentence. So the formal definition, okay, of this uh, entailment is like this: alpha, okay. Uh, this is a symbol, okay, which means that uh, follows, okay, logically, okay. So if and only if, so the if alpha, okay, uh, follows beta, if and only if in every model in which alpha is true, beta is also true. So this is obvious, right? If alpha is true, then beta will also be true and if it is not then it will not follow right because if alpha is true beta must be true to follow if it is not then it is not logically okay followed so this is a relation okay and also okay uh, this is a, re a representation uh, mathematical okay here alpha follows beta if and only if m alpha okay is uh, subset of okay this is a representation of subset of m beta okay 
So model alpha, f model of alpha sentence, okay, is subset of model beta, okay, sentence, okay. So this is a representation of model beta, okay, sentence, and this is a representation of model based on alpha, okay. So if model alpha is subset of model beta, okay. This is the there's addition like if model alpha is subset of okay model beta, then it means that alpha follows beta. Okay, so this will be and only if okay m alpha is subset of m beta. Okay, this is mathematical representation. And understanding entailment and inference, okay, uh, is such like this. Okay, so this is another point. Okay, this one and this one. Okay, so uh, understanding entailment, okay, and inference is another point. So think of the set of all consequences of knowledge base. Okay, so it is uh, just uh, evolve, evolve, uh, evolvement of okay of the. Uh, in uh, KB consequences. So if, let's say, uh, we are talking about understanding entailment and inference, so we must think about the, all the sets of, okay, all consequences of KB, knowledge base, as haystack, okay, this is the main thing, okay, haystack, and of alpha as a needle. So it can be considered as uh, it is a uh, symbolic okay, representation that haystack and alpha as a needle. Okay, you can think like this. So uh, this is okay. Just uh, another further ex exaggeration, extension of KB actually. Okay, so in uh, we can think of, of this concept of entailment in terms of okay set of all consequences of kb knowledge base that's all so entailment is like the needle okay the same way needle being in the haystack okay so inference is like finding it okay so this is a analogical representation of this all con these all concepts so the thing is you can think uh, entailment as single needle, okay, uh, which is uh, in the haystacks, okay, many, okay, inside. So uh, we, uh, we are just thinking about entailment is just one needle, okay, this is needle being in the haystack, and inference is like finding it, okay, and inference is to find out which one was there, okay, which one was there, something like that. Okay, uh, let's go to the inference. Okay, okay. Natija, okay, result. Okay. So an inference algorithm I can be derived okay, from KB knowledge base. We write mathematically like this way. Okay. So an inference algorithm I can be derived from KB knowledge base. Uh, and we write mathematically like KB. Okay. And this is the symbol. Okay. For deriving okay kb uh, so kb okay uh, the symbol of okay uh, this inference i alpha okay i is a sentence remember for sentence and kb is my base okay so which is pronounced alpha is sentence alpha is derived from knowledge base okay uh, uh, as I told you earlier, remember uh, alpha sentence and sentence can be thought as if you want to think uh, a sentence can be an idea. Okay, so we can think alpha sentence or idea is derived from knowledge base by inference i. Okay, this one, see, or i derives. Okay. Or I derives A, okay. Uh, it should be alpha actually, right? From KB, okay, like this one. 
So alpha is derived from KB by I, or we can think it, so this is one understanding, or this is another, okay, quotation, uh, like this one, this is alpha, okay, don't worry. So alpha derives, uh, I derives alpha, uh, I means inference derives sentence alpha from KB, okay? So as I told you, remember, uh, told you earlier, remember, uh, I told about the one figure. I will just go back and show you that one that you can understand that. I was talking about this figure, right? Remember, uh, every time the environment was, okay, uh, informed by, okay, using the census of agents okay so agents uses sensors to know about the environment this one okay and the sensors will update observations okay all the time to the agent and this updation process as i told you before is tell okay telling the okay knowledge base okay so first uh, if the observation or I environment okay, to the agent, it will move to the this I. Okay, remember this I is inference itself. An inference factor will inform, okay, will tell KB. Okay, so you can think that environment sensors, okay, uh, the sensors of uh, agent which is received some idea, some observation, some value, some uh, figures, okay, uh, which will be transferred, which will be, okay, uh, referred to the agent. And this, okay, uh, observations will be, okay, passed through the inference, okay, and inference will update KB, update the new knowledge, okay. So inference is always interacting with KB knowledge base uh, in updation process and also for retrieval of the knowledge, getting back the idea, okay, to work with the environment the same way, okay. So it is not just directly, it is going again to the, uh, the agent will ask the inference and inference will bring back that knowledge to the uh, agent, okay, and then and this process starts the asking. So the agent will ask the inference and inference will uh, get the idea or sentence, okay, from KB and then it will be passed through the agent uh, using the actuators, okay, to the environment. And the agent will do action at that time, right? So the action will be executed at this moment, retrieval, okay? So the process of updation and retrieval of sentences, knowledge, idea, okay, whatever you want to say, is like this way. So the same inference and KB is working again here. Just if you can remember the things, okay, like this way. So here, okay, in this one, we have, okay, uh, this mathematical representation, which is pronounced like this one, this way, that alpha sentence is derived, okay, from KB. Right? A sentence is derived from knowledge base by inference, okay, as I told you just now, right? So, uh, in the same way, we can represent this another, we can say in another words, okay, in another words, like uh, inference derives idea or sentence from KB, okay, like this way. The same thing, the same thing, exactly. This one and this one is exactly the same thing. Okay, let's move to the next one. An inference algorithm, okay? The inference algorithm, okay, that derives only. So uh, to get interaction with the inference within our uh, model, okay, this one, remember? Uh, like this or this, okay? Uh, we use uh, in the inference, which is inside this, okay, agent and in knowledge, uh, we always okay. If I can make it bigger, that's better. So, 
So let's say I will make like this, okay? This is the agent, okay? And let's say interaction is not going on, but inside there's an I, okay? Inference, and this is KB okay, here, right? So KB, okay, that's all. And I is here, that's all. So there's in between interaction between I and KB, okay? How? Using algorithms, okay? Algorithms. So the inference algorithms, okay, that drives only entail only entailed sentences, okay, is called sound or truth preserving. Okay. So whatever is derived, okay, is called sound or truth preserving. Okay, this one. And the sentence alpha can be derived from KB by procedure I. Okay. So uh, this time, okay, uh, sorry. This time, okay, the procedures, okay, uh, are used to represent that one, okay. But uh, the meaning is the same, okay. So if we want to have sentence alpha, okay, so sentence alpha can be derived from, okay, KB, knowledge base. So we can get ideas, okay, from KB by initiating, by doing some procedural programming or procedural language, okay, programming or some algorithm, ap apply some algorithm, okay, to get back those, okay, uh, ideas from KB or put inside the KB those ideas which is coming from environment, right? So all these are working together, sentence alpha, Okay, can be derived from KB by procedure I, okay, or inference layer algorithm. So, this is all about this one, right? The next thing is propositional logic, okay? So, up to now, we were talking about uh, inference, entailment, and logic. Uh, this time we are going to okay, study about the propositional logic in this slide. So what is this? Uh, propositional logic is, uh, as I told you earlier, is uh, something like thinking about true and false, like this, okay, mainly. So thanks to the George Bull, okay, the inventor and the great mathematicians, uh, George Bull, who in invented the logic, okay, Boolean algebra. And um, that idea is almost, okay, represented inside AI using propositional logic, okay, all these things. So the propositional logic is the simplest logic, you can think like this, okay. It is the simplest logic that illustrates basic ideas, okay, uh, about the logics, right, okay. And the relation between a sentence, the relation between a sentence, okay, and another sentence is called entailment. This is the same thing as it was in the last slide, okay? That's okay. So the syntax, okay? We are now talking about syntax. The syntax of propositional logic defines the allowable sentences, okay? So the syntax of propositional logic, okay, defines the allowable, means able to allow, okay, all those sentences. So all those sentences which are able to allow are syntax of, okay, propositional logic. that's all. So uh, why it is atomic, okay, this atomic sentence. The atomic sentence, okay, uh, is defined such a way that it is indivisible, okay, entanglement means we cannot divide further, okay, a sentence, atomic sentence, okay? So atomic sentence is indivisible. Atomic means basic, which is not divisible further in small parts, okay? So atomic sentence is indivisible syntactic element uh, and it consists of, okay, single propositional, okay, symbol. So we will see what is that one, okay, in symbols, okay, no problem. And each such symbol, okay, stands for 
proposition. That's all. And that can be true or false, like this way. Okay? And there are two proposition symbols which fix it with fixed meaning. True is always true, and proposition. Okay. Uh, proposition and false is always false. This is another proposition, right? Okay. Let's to the next one, and then we can uh, go further to the idea, okay? Let's say. So, the complex sentence, okay, now we have the complex sentence. So, the complex sentences are constructed, okay, from simpler sentences. So, if you add two simple sentences, it will, it may become complex, or three, or four, and five, okay, so on. So, every time you add one or more simple sentences, together it will become complex so this is the same thing okay complex sentences are constructed from simpler sentences okay using logical connectives okay this is okay so logical connectives okay are so five okay so there are five connectives okay in common so what are those so this is a symbol of not okay not so if I say there is a sentence W, then not W will be just opposite of that sentence, okay? Negative or negation of those sentences. For example, uh, let's say I say a, word, a sentence like um, just simple English. Say uh, the bell is ringing, okay? So this is sentence. But if I say not of that sentence, okay, negative of that sentence, it will be like bell is not ringing, okay, so this is just opposite of whatever actions are going on, okay, and okay, let's go to another uh, symbol, this one, and, okay, so the and is used to combine together, uh, actually, uh, we combine two sentences, okay, but uh, the thing is, it follows the Boolean algebra in the same way. For example, there are two sentences, W13 and uh, let's say P31. Okay? So, W13 and actually this is AND, okay? no problem. It's called conjugation okay? or AND. It is par it's part of our conjunctions, uh, okay? conjunctions. So this one, conjuncts. And uh, what is the meaning of this one? Let's say uh, I say the sentence W13, okay, like the bell is ringing and uh, and the second sentence may be it is morning. So if both are true, okay, if the bell is ringing and uh, today it is morning, okay, the time it is morning, then it will be true altogether. If one is false, let's say it is night and I say it is morning, then the sentence will be false in that case and the overall, okay, will become false. So and is such a, a symbol or such a connector, okay, conjunction, which is used to, okay, uh, check whether the two sentences are true or false. So it works as per the uh, propositional logic table. I will show you the table if it is there in future. Let's say uh, there or not. Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Okay. So I will come up here and then tell you about all these things. Okay. Don't worry. So uh, okay, let's see. Okay, uh, for the time being, what's going on further. Then we will come there, okay? Don't worry. Okay, let's move on to the next symbol, or, okay? So usually this is and, okay? And this is all, okay? This is, uh, this is sorry, this is not, and this is and, and this is all, just suppose it. So all is a sentence using, okay, uh, this symbol, and such as two sentences are odd, okay? Any, they are combined using or function or okay disjunction. So this is called disjunction, conjunction and disjunction. Okay. 
and uh, so this is the difference okay also implies okay implies means uh, if a sentence is true this implies another one implies can be considered as a, a final okay Res resulting pointing okay uh, symbol pointing symbols in the sense that let's say we have a sentence okay like this one another sentence like this one and we have combined together these two sentences by using and okay w and p okay and uh, let's say the result natija of these two is true or false so we say implies this means implies this one is negative okay so uh, Okay. This is the third okay, sentence. Okay, so we say, uh, I will give you an example. That's okay. Don't worry in future. That's okay. Um, because I don't have the table. Let me sh at the same time show you the table. That's better to understand. So wait a second. Uh, uh, let me finish this one. Then I will come to the table. Exactly. Then you will understand better. Okay. That's okay. So, okay. After this, okay, uh, so it is called implication, implies, okay, implication. It premise, it's premise or anti, okay, uh, antecedent, uh, antecedent, okay, that's a complex word, okay, and its conclusion or consequent is negative. Uh, the same thing, okay, don't worry about this one. And it implies are also, uh, impl implications are also known as reserves or if then sentence. Uh, okay, uh, I will explain this one later. Wait a second. And if and only if, okay, this is another one. Equivalent. Sometimes it is also called equivalent or sometimes it is also called biconditional. So there are many, okay, uh, name for this symbol. If and only if by conditional or equivalent okay let's say this sentence is equivalent to negative this sentence so directly i will go to the table for five logical connectors okay connectors then you can understand that better let's say we have two sentences p and q okay two ideas two sentence okay uh let's say uh Sentence one is false. Then uh, also sentence uh, P is false, sentence Q is false. Okay, this is the first situation that may happen. The second situation may happen if there are two sentences P and Q that let's say P is false and Q is true. Okay, this is another possibility. Uh, another possibility may exist like P is true and Q is false, okay? Just opposite of this one, the first one. Or both of the sentences and Q are true, okay? So there are four poss possibilities of P and Q if they are, uh, they are sentences, okay? P is one sentence and Q is another sentence. So there are four, uh, four possibilities like this. So, okay. Uh, let's go to this one first, negative P. The negative P means, okay, just opposite of this P sentence. So if I say, let's say if I say P is false in this case, okay, let me. So if I say P is false, so the negative of this P will be P is true, negative P will be true, just opposite of this one, P, okay? If P is false, then negative P will be true, okay? So if the P is true, then negative one will be, it will be ne uh, uh, false, right? So negative P will be false in this case. If P is true, right? then the negative of P will be false, just opposite of all these, okay? Just opposite of all these, the, because there's a negative. So this negative means uh, just opposite of the existing sentence status or the 
binary uh, boolean okay uh, representation false false true 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 false false just opposite okay let's go to the next one so this is uh, negative how we can change the sentences into negative okay uh, how about p and uh, and q okay p there are two sentences p and q so p and q together if we combine these two p and q as and p and q so because p is false and q is false so p and q will become false okay if p is false and q is true then still it will be false because one of the sentence is false so it will be false okay if the sentence is p is true and q is false then still we will get the false because q is false so if one of them is false okay then all the time we will get p and q as false it will be true only if p and q is true then it will be true that's okay right so this is okay about the p and q how about p or q this one uh, yes uh where third column is inverse of p yes surely of course then uh okay the thing is okay uh if So P and Q will work in such a way that if one of them is true is false like this like this or this in this P and Q then it will be false like this okay otherwise if both of them are true then it will be true like this okay just like boolean algebra so P and Q okay will be false whenever one of the sentence is false okay like this simply uh why it is happening like this the reason is i will tell you now okay because uh, it's better to understand by the let's say we have a circuit like this So this is a circuit, uh, electrical circuit, okay. and let's say these are the two switches P and Q. So what do you think about uh, this circuit? So let's say if you push the button P, okay, down, so it will be like here, right? And if you push the button Q, it will be like this then the circuit will the current will flow inside okay that's okay so if p is okay on and q is on means if p is okay true and q is true then it will be true the circuit uh, will flow the current inside otherwise in other cases let's say i say that let's say if uh, P is okay as usual okay it is not down but Q is down here okay it is on and P is off okay let's say it is false then can the circuit flow in this case no not really because uh, if, if the Q is on that's okay but the P is not on okay so the current cannot flow further from here right so that's why the entire okay p false q true will be false the current cannot flow so it is false so uh, this is exactly the same thing here okay and also 
Uh, let's say we have another okay, representation like this one. Let's say the P is on this time, okay? P is, and Q is off, okay? Like this way. So what about this one? Let's say it is like P is on, true, or Q is off, false, okay? Then the current will flow or not? Not really, okay? So even uh, P is true and Q is false, then still the current cannot flow inside. So it will be false again. Okay. The possibilities are there. I mean, only one okay condition is possible when P is on and Q is on. These two switches are on. Okay, so true, true means the current will flow true. So the same thing is here. When the two circuits, okay, two sentences are true, then it will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. Okay, uh, the next idea is P or Q. So let's say we have uh, one of the sentence is true. Okay, just opposite. Think about okay, this one. So we are talking about now P or Q. Okay, P or Q. So if one of the sen uh, sentence is true, true or both of them are true okay then it will be true otherwise it will be false okay so false 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 true true okay and true false true 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 okay like this way so this is okay uh, another way of representation of p or q two sentences combined to together using all Okay, symbol. And uh, P implies Q, this one. The next one is such a way, it is a little bit tricky, okay? Not uh, exactly, it is working the same way. If P is false, if P is false, this implies Q is false. So false, okay? This means it is true, okay? Because P is false and Q is false, then P implies Q because the results of both of them are okay, false, right? False, false, so it is okay. But sometimes it happens that one sentence don't depend on other, okay? P is false, okay, that's okay. But P implies Q, but Q is true here, right? So in this case, it is true still, why? Because uh, they are completely independent and it is possible that P could be false, okay? The sentence P could be false. And Q, okay, is another sentence, another independent sentence, which is true, okay? So P implies Q, so it is also true, okay? It is just uh, a little bit, okay, uh, not understandable completely as per the first okay, impression, but really it is true, okay? Uh, okay, the next one is, if the P is true, this implies Q is false, okay? And this is false, okay? And P is true and Q is true. So if P is true, implies Q is true. That is true, okay? So only thing, okay, you must try to understand that this is uh, unusual behavior, but really, uh, if you think from the logical perspective, okay, in context of AI, it will be. Uh, I will give you some example in future, that's okay. The, but for the time being, just try to understand this is completely the same nature, right? Okay, let's move. Uh, but it is true, in fact. It is the real truth, okay? Uh, okay, the next thing is P e is equivalent to Q. This means uh, we have, okay, P false and Q false. So both are false, so they are equivalent, right? That's true. Let's say P is false and Q is true. So false is equivalent to true? No, it's not possible. So it's false. How about uh, the next one? P is true and Q is false. They are no. 
true is equal to true p and q yeah this is possible true okay so this is the truth table for five logical connectors okay so let's move on okay and now you can have better idea now about these symbols and these logical uh, operations so uh, here you can understand the things that's okay so uh, this is an uh, pseudocode okay or just you can think of bnf okay for propositional logic so uh, bnf is a backus okay a no form of grammar okay grammar of sentences in propositional logic so you can think it as grammar for writing that sentence okay of new language in ai that is a sentence of propositional logic so sentence okay is simply atomic sentence or complex sentence okay it could be atomic sentence can be true false or symbolic okay like this and symbols okay can be uh, for the sentences are p q r s t and so on okay as you per your wish that's okay so there are certain rules okay the rules are followed by these logical symbols uh, in terms of sentences so remember we talked about sentences okay the idea itself so now i will extend this idea into a uh, rule set of rules so these are not, as you can see are uh, the set of rules that are available okay in the ai and especially in the logical section so let's start right here so the first rule is uh, which is known as commutative okay commutative or commutativity of and so this means if we have say, a sentence alpha and another sentence beta so we can add alpha and beta and this will be equally okay equal to the beta and alpha okay just reverse the sentences so alpha and beta is equal to beta and alpha in the same way we have another okay uh mutated proof for or okay a or alpha or beta is equal to beta or alpha in the same way we have if there is three sentences alpha beta and gamma okay then we have alpha and beta combined together then we combine the last one gamma so it will be exactly same as we combine first beta and gamma and then combine at the end alpha so it will be like this they are associative okay, by nature also uh, the same thing can, could happen for the r okay so this is for n and this is for the r okay so, so the r one is alpha or beta and or gamma okay alpha or beta or gamma so it will be as beta gamma okay? first and then or alpha so beta or so uh, two negatives makes a positive so the negative of negative a sentence is equal to uh, just alpha okay this one so negative of negative alpha is equal to alpha double neg negative okay double negative always eliminates okay together they just become positive so okay uh, alpha implies beta this means negative beta implies negative alpha uh, this rule is called contraposition and in the same way alpha implies beta then negative alpha okay or beta are equivalent implication rule uh, implication elimination actually alpha uh, it is equivalent to beta and this means alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha okay by conditional elimination and also uh, this one uh, negative of alpha and beta is, is equal to negative alpha or negative beta, De Morgan's theorem. Another theorem of De, De Morgan's is negative of alpha or beta is equal to negative of alpha and negative of beta. Okay. And uh, at the end, distributivity of okay, uh, n over r. So we are distributing now okay, alpha and together beta or gamma will be equal to 
alpha and beta or alpha and gamma the same way alpha or beta and gamma is equal to alpha or beta and alpha or gamma okay? distributed rate of or these are so these are the basic equivalents let's go to the next one it's about the inference it influences itself uh, I, as I told you last time that inference is a, uh, you can think of it as a control factor or just a result, a material. Okay? So uh, this is combined together with the proof, okay, how it is here. Okay? So the patterns of inference are called inference rule. Okay? So there are certain rules, inference rule, okay? and the patterns of inference are called inference rule. And inference rules are such as, uh, can be applied to derive a proof. Okay? So these inference rules are used to uh, derive a proof, okay? to get some evidence proof. Okay? So a kind of evidence, so a chain of conclusion, okay? just like this. Uh, the, a chain of conclusion okay? leads to desired goal. So if you want to achieve that desired goal, you must have chain of conclusion and then you will get some conclusion okay that conclusion is the desired goal okay so okay uh okay the next thing is uh modus okay exponents so um this is another rule okay like alpha implies beta then alpha or beta okay this one this is it is a mathematical formula okay that's all the notation okay, means that whenever any sentence okay, of the form alpha and beta is there, then alpha is, are, and alpha are given, then sentence beta will be concluded, will be inferred, will be resulted, the theta okay, will come as beta. Okay? So uh, this is okay, all about this given condition and then getting the theta result and and elimination okay so this is alpha and beta by alpha okay which says that uh, from a conjunction okay, like this one okay any of the conjunction can be inferred like this way okay so so this is okay all about inference and proof okay the next one is cnf okay conjunctive normal form so here again we have a sentence okay, okay uh, which is expressed as conjunction of disjunction okay of letters uh, being sentences okay or uh, to be okay uh, considered as conjunctive normal form cnf okay? so we say cnf to those sentences which are expressed as conjunctive or conjunction of disjunction okay? of letters okay? sentences so the step to find the CNF is like this, okay? First we eliminate equivalent, this one, and replacing with the, uh, re replacing alpha equivalent beta to this form, okay? Then we, uh, is it, it is by okay, the rule as we discussed, okay? Here, the same thing, okay? Then we have the second one, eliminate, okay? Implies, so it will re replace alpha implies beta with this rule. Okay, this one. Okay. In the same way, we change the things like this one. Okay, uh, two negatives become positive. Okay, like this one. Uh, a negative alpha and beta will become like this, or the, this one become like this. Okay, all this. Now we have a sentence containing nested okay, and and all operators, which is applied on sentences. Okay, we apply the distributive law. Okay, uh, which is in the figure in your textbook. Okay, you can see that. So distributing, okay, all over n, okay, whenever possible, like this one. This is an example. So uh, negative, okay, b1, one, one, okay, this one, or p12, one, or p21, and negative p12 okay so this is from the figure okay p12 and or b11 okay? and then we have uh, and okay uh, negative p21 or b11 all these together 
Okay, let's move to the large local search algorithms. So the local search algorithms are and also optimization problems. So the problem that come across optimization of the algorithms. So we will discuss all these things in this slide. So here, okay, we are much concerned about the local search algorithm that operates uh, using a single okay, current state. Uh, uh, so the main idea is local search algorithms work with a single state, okay, current state, which is the current state, and we look okay to the neighbors, other state, okay, nearby. So we are in this position to see okay, the next state, okay, the neighbor one. So in this one, we always move only to the neighbors, okay, neighbor state. Uh, so uh, also they are not symmetric. One important idea. Okay? So it could be asymmetric. Okay? Two key advantages are there to use the local search algorithm. This one is they use very low memory, number one. The second thing is they find solutions in large or infinite state space. Okay? So the solutions may come in very large okay, or infinite state okay, space. So in case of infinite, okay, uh, there's no definite, num no certain number of states okay let's say we have infinite state we don't know how much states are there so this is very effective algorithm in that case okay let's move to the next one the local search algorithm okay and optimization the same thing local search algorithms okay are useful for solving pure optimization problem number one so in this one okay uh, the aim or the goal is the target is to find the best state okay, available uh, in accordance with okay, the objective function. This is a mathematical function okay, to find the goal. Okay, and, uh, it is almost the same as we were talking about goal seeking algorithms. So the land has both a uh, location, which is defined by the state itself. The location, your current state, or the next state, okay? and elevation, okay, uh, which is uh, defined by the value okay, of heuristic cost function or objective function. So these mathematical. Remember, I told you last time, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I think maybe in this two weeks or so uh, about the heuristic functions and how they worked in the greedy search algorithm. Also, uh, the things are almost the same, but. A little different, that's all. Okay. So the elevation, okay, if the elevation corresponds to the cost, let's say we are thinking about the elevation, the next stage, okay, uh, as in terms of the cost, then okay, our aim should be to find the lowest value, okay, the lowest value, okay, the global minimum, okay, if elevation, okay, corresponds to an objective function. So low value, can be low value, okay, minimum, and that is the useful, okay, or most effective, okay, way to find. Uh, then the aim will be to find the highest peak, okay, or the global maximum. Uh, so this is okay, not in our rule in this algorithm. So uh, we are thinking always about the lowest, not the highest, okay, not the highest actually. Then the aim is to, okay, uh, so, but here, okay, as you can see here, the peak, okay, the lowest value, first value, value, okay, uh, I give a global minimum, okay, like this one, and if the elevation corresponds to the objective function, this one, okay, these are together, actually, I should, okay, make it like this one. And uh, this is just about it actually. I think I should not like mix up. So, if the elevation uh, corresponds to an objective function, then the aim, our aim should be to find the highest peak, okay? global maximum. So, global minimum in the case of elevation is equal to cost. Uh, global maximum okay, will be. Uh, and global minimum will be in the case of iteration is equal to cost and global maximum will be 
okay in the case of elevation is equal to objective function so these two are different opposite okay, conditions so okay the complete location search okay the com a complete location uh, local search algorithm okay, always finds a goal okay. so the main target the main uh, goal uh, aim is to find the goal if it exists an optimal okay, algorithm always finds a global maximum or minimum the same thing okay, this one. so this is a famous algorithm hill client search so in this one okay it is simply a loop okay it is a simple it is simply a loop that uh, continuously move okay forward in the direction of increasing value okay? so that's why it is called uphill uh, i will give you an example let's say uh, there's a function like this and okay like this so the movement okay is like this one okay it will let's say the current stage is this one it will move to the upper one and then it will find the next one next upper okay so it will always find try to find the hill value top value okay of the peak one okay? so increasing value and obviously if it is on the top this means it has higher value right increasing value that's all so that's why it is called uphill uphill okay top hill uphill so hill climbing search is just like uh, someone is climbing on the tree or climbing on the mountain okay like this uphill so hill climbing search the idea came like this one so it terminates okay when it reaches at the peak so it the process will stop okay when uh, we find a peak value okay where there's no neighbor okay negative uh, high value means the peak means the highest value right so in this case uh, the neighbors okay other positions will be have will have the lower value right so algorithm doesn't maintain a search tree okay it doesn't maintain a search tree like this one so the current node data okay, the current node data structure needs only okay, needs only records the state and its objective function value so it needs the state and objective function value that's all these two things the third thing is uh, important for the for the hill climbing is a hill climbing doesn't okay doesn't look ahead okay it don't look uh, as a pre-plan it just looks okay uh, beyond okay immediate neighbors also okay? uh, so uh, in fact i should say uh, it's a different one i should say like hill climbing does not look ahead beyond immediate neighbors so always okay like this this is the okay and then there's a neighbor state like this one so it will not look other states which are far from here the neighbor so it will first it will see only the neighbors okay so it doesn't look beyond okay i should say actually i should take this one so hill climbing doesn't look beyond okay neighbors that's all uh okay uh the hill climbing is sometimes called greedy okay the same idea greedy local search because it grabs a good neighbor okay state without thinking further the same idea actually they are connected and local maximum okay is the state okay local maximum is the peak that is higher than neighbors okay? neighboring state so this is a, a simple example of okay, algorithm and in terms of suitable okay so that we have uh, defined a function hill climbing problem we are taking inside and then returning a state okay, that is local minimum uh, maximum sorry a state with local maximum means it is at the peak at the top okay like this one so inputs are the problem okay like this one and uh, the local variables are the current state and the neighbor states okay also so make note okay this is another okay uh, function uh, i mean say uh, the process actually okay so uh, what does it uh, do okay built-in function you can think like this 
So make node, okay? Make node, okay? So making the node from initial stage, okay, to the uh, that is current one. So this is the process to create an initial state, okay? Uh, existing state where the agent is okay located. Then we start the loop from the current state, okay, to okay, the highest value successor of the current state. So the, it will move to the next one, neighbor. Okay. If the value of the neighbor is less than or equal to the value of the current one, then okay, it will return to its current state. Otherwise, the, it will move to the neighbor state, from the current state to the neighbor one. Okay, that's all. So genetic algorithm is a very vast okay, algorithm. And it is okay sometimes called a GA, a variant of stochastic, okay? uh, complex or violent, okay, beam search algorithm, where we don't have any set of rules to define. Stochastic means uh, a process without any control, okay. We don't have any rule in this kind, in these kind of okay, stochastic processes. So, uh, genetic algorithm is a uh, variation or is a it is a another okay type of stochastic being search in which the successor states okay the uh, next states okay let's say this is the current one the next one is this one okay so uh, the successor states are generated okay, by combining together two parent states okay? so combining two parent states will create a okay, uh, successor one rather than modifying a single state. So it doesn't depend on single to single, one to one. Okay? And GA begins with the set of K, uh, which is a randomly okay, generated state. K is a uh, randomly generated state, which is called population, that's all. So each state okay, here, or individual, is represented by a string okay? uh, over a finite number of alphabets so most commonly it is a string of zeros and one yeah, like this one so online search agents are like this one online search agents operates by interleaving okay interleaving computation and the action so first it takes an action means okay the agent these online search agents uh, do some action then okay it observes so first it does some action, then observe the environment, and then record or compute the next action. So usually the agents, okay, remember as I told you earlier, it's like this one. The agent first takes some sensation, some observation, right, and then do they do some action. It is a little different from all from that okay common agent process. It takes first, okay, the, it do some action first. Then it observes using uh, sensors okay, uh, about the environment, and then it records all those okay, observations, and thereafter they decide for the next step, next action. So online search is a necessary idea okay, for exploration, uh, exploration processes like uh, scientific exploration. Maybe if you have a satellite, okay. So there the actions are unknown. So it is usually very useful in the case of unknown state and action. We don't know about the different location states within the environment, and we want to know each and everything, okay, for the environment. So it is useful in that case. Okay? I don't know. That's all. So the next thing is an agent in this state. An agent in this state okay, of ignorance must use, okay, it must use actions as experiments, okay, number one, to find out, okay, what to do next, number one. Number two, okay, uh, I mean, thereafter, it must interleave, okay, uh, means it will do computation and do action. The same idea, actually, I should say, to get this. An example is a robot, okay, as a uh, hovering robot or maybe a wandering okay? robot. 
uh, it want to find out okay locations of different okay uh, let's say it is on the uh, each and every location on the floor uh, container. Uh, but in the vacuum cleaner okay the actions are done okay uh, predefined but here okay we don't have any idea about different location different states that's all so a robot that is placed in a new building like this one uh, they don't know anything about the new building environment and so they must explore okay uh, one by one to each and every location to to build a map okay why because to build a map and uh, uh, that can be used for getting okay a movement from a to b that's all so online search agents i think uh, we have uh, if you can do it again okay uh, just three slides that's all so online agents okay online agents like this one receive perceptions telling it what state it has reached okay so it will record all those states from this information collect the information and then argument map okay this is important of the environment the same idea as i told you as well. the, and the current map will help okay it is used to decide for the next step to go to the next okay so online location okay random walk can be used to explore the environment that's all a random walk okay randomly moving and recording each and every point states simply select at random one of the available action like this one from the current state uh, preference can be given to actions okay, that have not yet been tried up to now okay. and random walk okay, will eventually find a goal or complete its exploration provided that the space is definite a certain state okay the space is limited not unlimited okay so in this case uh, it is successful the process can be very low but this is a uh, demerit uh, because it has to take each and every point every state so that's why it takes a long time to record each and everything and do a mapping process so the figure okay, here shows okay the environment in which uh, it, uh, a random walk will take place exponentially so actually uh, let's say it starts from here it will move to this state maybe return back here and come again here and then start again go to the next one so the random walk okay is a lengthy process but it takes okay uh, each and every record okay like this one so finally it will find the goal but it will be very long it will take a very long time that's all so because each step okay backward progress is mapped twice that's why it is lengthy it is very uh, time consuming as likely as forward progress so an agent okay is uh, uh, implementing this scheme which is called learning real time star okay? lrta star so this is okay another one term which you should know the agent uh, the agent that implements a kind of scheme is called learning real time uh, agent a star okay? uh, optimizing under uncertainty okay? uh, this encourages okay, the agent to explore new location new uh, positions okay uh, by traversing by moving to a different bar okay? but it is promising because we can utilize those okay for those new history for future uh lrt star agent the same one is uh guaranteed so what kind of guarantee to find a goal okay? ultimately finally uh in this finite state environment and it is safely okay explorable environment that's all. 